YouTube, welcome to the Blades to Be Shop. No project today. Today we are going to do a full shop tour. We're going to do front to back, top to bottom, open every drawer, every cabinet, and just take a look through at everything that I have managed to fit into this single car garage for this mini machine shop that I'm operating here. So if you're interested in those kind of things, hey, I hope you'll enjoy walking through the shop with me and just taking a look at everything I have in here. We're not going to go into a lot of it in great detail. As I go through the shop, as I come across things that I've done other videos on, I'll point that out if you want more detail on those. You can definitely go check out some of those other videos on the channel. And otherwise, if you see something and if I don't go into enough detail on it, hey, drop a comment in here, ask me a question about it. Happy to answer questions about every Everything I can in the shop and uh, again see what you're interested in or if you see another video idea please drop that in the comment would love to hear from you for those of you new to the channel if this is the first video you found on the blades to be channel I encourage you to check out the other videos on here on machining welding knife making just everything else around the house that's going on here in the blades to be shop if you like the videos I'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel as we continue to grow here in 2022 and if you like this video hey drop a like drop a comment on here let others know that it is worth coming to check out. Let's go ahead, we're gonna start from the outside and we'll start with a little bit of a wide angle and walk through the whole shop here and get a, a good look at everything, kinda of understand the space and how to operate in it. And then we'll start going back through every drawer, every cabinet and checking everything out. I hope you enjoy the journey as we walk through the shop today. Let's go. All right, well, let's go ahead and get this started with a nice wide angle walk through where we can look at everything that we can fit into this single car garage mini machine shop and then we'll come back and actually open all the cupboards and drawers and take a little deeper dive into everything so walking in first over here on the left try to take a look at some of the cracks and crevices so in behind the lathe here trying to utilize this space so that's where i have my bandsaw that fits tucked in there nicely a little gladiator cabinet up above it and of course this is where i have that pm 1440 tl lathe that's parked right over there on the left hand side coming in the door there's lots of videos out there on this and operating the lathe and a lot of my videos have a lot more information on that lathe all right i'm gonna go ahead and close the door behind me here since it's super hot outside so there's a good look at the shop in its normal configuration with that one roller tool cabinet that's where it's parked most of the time lathe over there on the left hand side over here on the right i've got really two functional workbenches this is one of them right now i'm in the middle of assembling some knives so i've got a little bit of those laid out on this workbench and more on the other one on this back wall i've got some of this uh, old craftsman hanging plastic board can't get that anymore that i'm aware of but had some of that from before so i've got some wood tools hung up on there and then there's another little crack crevice i've got some longer tools a couple of little pry bars some bolt cutters some other pieces tucked in behind there, I'm trying to utilize that space. I've got an old, just a kitchen cabinet type of a shelf in here with some extra hardware on it, some electrical, some extra emery cloth, uh, some other nuts and bolts in that bottom cabinet. All my Makita battery operated hand tools hanging up on the wall there, including the battery charger for that Makita and just a box where I keep some leftover bits of emery cloth trying to maximize that. A little bit of hand tools hanging on there and we'll go ahead and run through each of the drawers in that bottom cabinet here in a couple minutes. Let's continue our way through. So over there on the right we've got this coot belt grinder, 72 inch belt grinder. It's what I do most of my knife work on. I built that stand over 20 years ago now but really tried to build that up and get a nice height for where I am for operating that. And then I've got this A-frame rack that holds all my different 72-inch belts, all the different grits. Works really well if going through there for all that knife making. And I've got another set of shelves just hanging on the wall. I'm not going to go through each one of those cabinets, but I'll kind of walk you through. I've got an aluminum spool gun up there for my Lincoln welder. Got some just leftover electrical bits. Uh, that's just another little box for an angle grinder. Orbital belt sander there by DeWalt leftover filter for my vacuum on the wall and again just some extra plumbing hardware electrical hardware that blue bin's just got some small scrap pieces of wood in it so just things that i don't have to get to that often but don't want to throw away either can get access to those pretty quickly 
When I'm using the belt grinder a lot, that A-frame comes out from behind there and rolls on the floor, so I've got good access to all the belts on both sides of that. We'll show that configuration here in a little bit. And then I've got this Husky roller cabinet here. This one moves around as needed to kind of keep things out of the way. So where it is right now, I can access all the drawers for this other two cabinets down the wall. I can access all these drawers. Just can't really function to get to that belt grinder, so move that when I'm doing more belt grinding. All right, coming in a little further, we've got a Baldor buffer set up on there. And I've got a couple of videos you've probably seen where I also mount uh, different wheels on there for grinding my brazed carbide tool bits. So you can see those set up on that grinder. I've got an old shop vac hanging up on the wall, but I tell you what, I sure like it. I would like to have a larger shop vac, but I just don't have the space. So that wall hanging one works really well. And then I've got uh, what's called the lap wheel here for disc sander for some different flat grinding. I usually keep that one covered up, keep the dust off it. Obviously the air conditioner hanging up on the wall, keep the shop heated and cooled. Just a good jet wood bandsaw there for all kinds of different material that I can cut. Aluminum, wood, everything else. All right, let's back up and kind of take a look down the rest of the left side. We saw the lathe. Get in a little further, we've got our jet mill drill. In behind that, there's a cabinet, mostly just some woodworking things in there. We'll take a look inside that here in a moment. So we've got this jet mill drill, and then of course the Tormach 1100MX CNC mill. And you can see we've got room to operate in between. I'm going to try to get some other video and show exactly what it looks like with me standing in that operator space and how much room you really have to, to work in there. Trying to use more of that wall space, have a few more tools hanging up on the wall. A lot of the accessories for adjustments on this jet mill drill, clamp downs. Got a couple of automotive ramps hanging up on the wall up there out of the way of that garage door. Again, really have to maximize the space when you're just in a small one car garage. Normally on this Tormach, I have it set up with a Pearson Pro Pallet system. Right now I don't have anything on there. We'll see that Pro Pallet system when we go through some drawers and I have several videos out here on unboxing that and setting that up. Coming in the rest of the way now. So get around, there's the side view into that Tormach 1100 MX. And here's really my other good functional workbench that I can use. So we'll go through the drawers in this here in a moment. Another cabinet up on top, we'll get into that in a moment as well. And uh, some of those are just some empty boxes up there, a little bit of leftover uh, electrical clamps and some other RC equipment. Used to do a lot more with RC helicopters, so still have some of that around the shop here in different places. We get further in and here is a little bit heavier air compressor. Uh, I don't use this one to run the Tormach, this one is more for the sandblasting and just general everything else I need to do around the shop. Got this nice Viper chair. Got a video out there on putting that together as well. Tell you what, it has been a great shop chair. They're pricey, but I really like that. And over in the corner, here's that Grizzly surface grinder. A couple videos out there you can watch on the whole review assembly of that one and the nice electrical I went through. There's my Lincoln 180C welder. Now again, it's all movable, it's on wheels, so I'll pull that out and show you what it looks like to uh, operate that surface grinder in the corner, hanging up on the wall, some of my welding helmets, welding equipment, power cords, some saw horses, and then underneath this yellow box is my kiln for heat treating knives. So I'll pull the box, the cover off of that and show you what that looks like here and get set up like I was going to do some heat treating. But otherwise, it's uh, covered up, keeps the dust off it, it makes a pretty nice shelf. And then coming around the corner, so you can get in behind this Tormach, and that's where I've got room to walk in. Uh, another entry door into the shop. Large toolbox, just mostly mechanic tools. I've got a little bit of uh, machining tools in there. Most of my machining tools are in some of these other boxes and drawers. But we'll go through all of these and take a peek inside. And then just another cabinet over here in the corner uh, with some oil pans, some leftover spare parts, and then my go bag for inside the house doing chores and a few things left over in there. And once again, just maximizing space tucked in here 
underneath the corner of this Tormach, that's where I have a small air compressor and that's what runs the tool changer and everything on that Tormach. So that is nice and tucked out of the way and you can see that automatic oiler for the Tormach tucked in under there. So I'm trying to maximize and use that space as well. Hey, just a couple other places I forgot to show. Underneath these roller cabinets or underneath my workbenches, another great place to store some extra steel. So I've got some of that underneath there. Same thing underneath this other roller cabinet over here. And underneath the Tormach, I've got just a little bit of space for storage under there, but this Tormach also comes with a cabinet. And that's a great place to store the Tormach tool bag and then all my empty BT30 tool holders, in case I ever need some little plastic containers. Have that in there, some of the extra airline that came with the Tormach. So that's where I keep all my extra Tormach accessories or extra parts. And finally, tucked in here beside the big toolbox, Got just a little two-step stair step. That's where I keep my air lines that I run off of that yellow air compressor that I showed earlier. And of course, a couple of fire extinguishers. I always wanna make sure you've got a fire extinguisher in your shop. I think that covers the last of the cracks and crevices. All right, so I've got a little bit of spillover into the garage as well. You can see I've got my oxyacetylene tanks. That's where I have my sandblast cabinet. And uh, in that yellow bin back there, that's where I have a anodizing tool for anodizing titanium keep my extra sand some extra oil for changing the oil on the lathe so I do have a little bit of spillover in to the garage and then finally the last thing I've got in the garage is over here in the corner I have my wood shop so these don't fit over in the, the metal shop anymore so I've got a table saw miter saw and then tucked in here under the stairs I do have a router table as well well, that's a look at it coming in from the big door. Let's go ahead and take a look at what it's like walking in the man cave from the back door. So, same thing, coming in the back. Got plenty of room to walk in past the large toolbox. Coming in at the back side of that Tormach 1100 MX. Got one good workbench. Come around, good walkway through here. This part on the Tormach, this, this pivots and swings out of the way, so depending on what you're doing, you can have that turned and, and out of your way to give yourself a little more room to walk through here. Plenty of room to operate that lathe. Plenty of room to stand in there to operate either the jet or the Tormach. And get down here to operate and work on this other workbench. All right, let me move a couple things around and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm set up on uh, doing some more grinding. We'll move this one bench down out of the way a little bit, get set up like we're doing some grinding. And then I'll also get it set up and show you what it looks like to get in there and operate that surface grinder. After that, we'll come back, go through some of these cabinets, go through some of these drawers and finish up this full tour. All right, so there's what it looks like configured now to be able to get in there and either operate that kiln, do a little bit of heat treating. I typically set a little piece of wood on the floor right there for hot items coming out. I usually have a fan set up and then just operate right in that space. On the piece of wood, I've got a vise with a couple of aluminum plates that I use to plate quench my steel. So all that works to come out of there. And then the surface grinder, move that air compressor out of the way, move the welder out of the way. And I've got plenty of room to stand in there to operate that surface grinder. I'll show, again, some quick video of standing in that space to do that here in a second. Get a little better sense of what that looks like. And finally, if I'm going to do a lot of grinding, then I move that A-frame out of the space right here. So just set that A-frame over here in front of the lathe. can get access to all those belts on the front side or the back side. can spin that whichever way I need to. And lots of room to operate then in front of that belt grinder and do that. Usually when I'm operating that belt grinder, that's when I'm running that air handler up there on the ceiling, trying to keep all the grinding dust and everything blown down to this end of the shop. You'll notice I keep a pretty good coat of oil and everything on my lathe ways, my everything. It gets a little dusty in here operating different parts of machinery, so 
I, one, it's humid here in Texas, so I want to make sure it's not rusting. Also, that oil collects a lot of the dust and grit and particles out of the air, so I wipe all that down typically before I operate a machine. So again, good coat of oil on all the uh, bedways and everything on the, the mill, in addition to the Tormach. All right, well that's sort of a look at the shop, configured a couple of different ways. Let me get in front of a few of these machines, give you a chance to see what that looks like, and then we'll start going through some drawers and cabinets and dive a little deeper into what we've got going on in here. All right, just try and give you some true perspective here of how much room I've got. So once I'm over here, I've got this A-frame out of the way. All these belts are behind me. I mean, it's, again, pretty good room, arm's length away from the grinder. I've got all of this space in here to move around when I'm doing any of my grinding work. Still have good access to this workspace, this bench over here to be able to put things down. So a lot of room when I'm set up in here to be able to do this grinding type work. So let me go ahead and put this A-frame back away and we'll take a look at kind of how it looks around these other machines when I'm in here operating those. Yeah, before I roll those drawers back in front, even inside this A-frame, you know, that's where I've got all my belts hanging. Even inside that, still a great place to utilize some space. I've got a couple of longer levels, a couple of squares. I've got a four foot square tucked inside there. So again, really trying to maximize all the space that I have. I keep some extra wood stain inside there as well. So that's another shelf that I can use to store things. All right, now for operating the lathe, normally I have this tool bench right behind me where it is. I've got access to the drawers and some of my lathe tooling, some of my insert bits and everything right behind me. Measuring tools I've got in this top drawer. We'll go through some of that in a moment. But even with this right behind me, there's still plenty of room. I've got all this room to walk around in here, move around, all my lathe tools, most everything is in front. And I can still get to that one workbench in behind me if I need some more room over there. So plenty of room to operate this piece of equipment with this bench kind of in its usual resting place in front of the grinder. And operating this surface grinder. Again, even with this kiln, once I move the box from in behind me, I've got plenty of room to stand in here, walk around, operate all my levers on this, move this back and forth, and do what I need to to operate this surface grinder without any problems at all. Oftentimes, I even sit on that Viper chair. If I'm gonna be doing a lot of grinding, I'll sit and go back and forth and do that as well. They make this a little bit more comfortable. I did find that I'm almost always pulling on only one lever. There's two other ones that you can put on here, but I found it's a lot easier to keep track of where you're starting and stopping by just having one, and it also keeps it a little bit easier to walk around in here by removing that one lever and not leaving that on there all the time. So there's room to operate the surface grinder, and obviously with the kiln, plenty of space in here to operate when I'm doing heat treating and doing that, so no problem there at all. All right, I think that should be a good angle up there to really get a sense of there's plenty of room to get in here and operate this mill drill. I've got room behind me. If I stand up against the Tormach, I mean, I'm all the way back here away from the mill drill. So I've got lots of room to operate in here and use this. And turn around, and most of the time I'm operating this Tormach, same thing. Got quite a bit of room behind me. If anything, I can use this as a little shelf. I can put some wood or something down on here if I need a, a workspace behind me. But I've got lots of room to get in and out of here with any parts that I need. Keep this DRO tucked out of the way. And I've got plenty of room to walk out of over here to the rest of the shop. Swing this out of the way. Walk around to the rest of the shop over there. So it's not that tight to operate in here with both of these machines, and that works really, really well. All right, I think that's pretty much it for operating machines around the space. Let's go ahead and open some cupboards, open some drawers, and take a look at what else we've got in here. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you've got a question, we're gonna be going through these drawers pretty quickly looking at things, but if you see something you want more information on, drop a comment in there, happy to answer anything that I can. All right, let's take a look. All right, inside this cabinet above the lathe, first up on the top, I've got a couple of extra bandsaw blades. Remember that bandsaw is down underneath, tucked in behind. So I just have lots of hardware. I keep lots of paper up there. If I need to do some epoxy work or anything like that, can pull out a piece of paper to lay down. All those extra nuts, bolts, screws, things around the shop. A lot of these larger ones are the ones that came on pallets as this machinery got delivered. And that's pretty much it. So nuts, bolts, hardware, that's the main thing inside this cabinet. 
All right, we already went over the kind of what's in and around this workbench. Again, lots of hand tools, so files are what's up on top. All right, inside the drawers. So top drawer, I've got a lot of extra files, file card, a couple of marking tools, marking devices. Next drawer down, I've got, you know, just some other hand tools, a lot of extra hacksaw blades. Keep those inside of a piece of PVC pipe to keep those organized. Some epoxy, some true oil, a couple pieces of leather for grabbing things in the vise, some sturts it sticks for epoxy. And this is just a really old drill index. Use that mostly for wood, uh, some older taps. Nothing too exciting in there. And down at the bottom, those are my two chuck caddies for removing the three and the four jaw chuck off of the lathe. And also another angle grinder for just mostly doing welding work. It's got a wire brush on there, cleaning up any welds. Uh, this top drawer is kind of a junk drawer with some paperwork, some uh, leftover knife parts, just kind of a book on steps for following for going through making knives. So again, kind of a junk drawer there. This next one down is where I keep that little uh, Bowley Linen Watchmaker's Lathe. So there's definitely a video out there on my channel if you want to see kind of the go through and clean up and the rebuild on that and all the little parts that came with it. I had my uncle give me that, so that was a nice little gift and went through and cleaned that up, made a few parts for it to repair it. And last drawer in here is pretty much everything around my Dremel tool. I've got some extra 72 inch belts, some screwdriver bits, and like I say, mostly just Dremel parts and accessories in here. So that's it for that workbench. All right, we'll work our way down to this movable workbench, the one that's out here in the middle of the shop. So nice story with this top green toolbox, and uh, you'll see with a lot of the machinist tools I have, I actually bought those off of, uh, was my girlfriend's father at the time, and that was over 30 years ago now. So right when I was becoming a machinist, he was leaving being a machinist. So I bought a lot of tools from him. So I bought this top box, a lot of micrometers, a lot of a couple other verniers, and just really a lot of tools I ended up getting from him. So this toolbox I've had for, like I say, over 30 years. In the top section, some dial indicators, and I've got my test dial in there just for doing different setups. Uh, this one, there's a video out there on my channel on making this. This is actually a depth stop. You can put the dial against that for on the tail stock on my lathe. So we went through and made that part in a video. Working our way through here. So just the stone for touching up the surface on either the CNC or the mill. This is I'm changing out vices. Just make sure to keep everything stoned, clean and flat. A uh, spare tip for a Heimer in case one of those ever breaks. Dressing wheel. The ball bearings that I use to set the tool height on my Tormach. So again, another video out there on setting the tool heights on the Tormach if you want to check that out. Uh, just some clamps in there. My smaller mics that I use a lot up there in that top drawer. Depth mic, a couple other measuring tools, some snap center punches, thread pitch gauges, edge finding tools, and just some leftover tool bits, some hole punches, some high-speed steel tools. In this one, I've got a Sterrett combination square vernier. So it was nice. That actually, that uh, combination square was a gift for my dad when I graduated from machinist school. So that's something that he gave me. So again, I've had that for a long time. Just a manual set of verniers, deburring tools, extra deburring tool pieces. And down in the bottom drawer, just some braised carbide tool bits wheel dresser and some tools and this big top drawer on here so here is mostly knife hardware a couple of knives in the process of being worked on and again just a book of instructions notes on assembling knives a lot more micrometers in here i've got an inside mic the rest of my outside mics uh that uh, that's a 12 inch vernier underneath there again that same gentleman that i got that top toolbox from uh, same thing with that Sterrett one through four combination mic underneath there. So again, a lot of those machinist tools came from 30 years ago. Digital calipers in there, the and then that Heimer for manually setting up uh, edge finding on the, the manual mill. 
down in here, just get into some a bunch of end mills. So it's kind of almost all milling down this side of the toolbox. So some end mills, there's some taps in the back, a couple of tap handles, a lot more end mills, drills, the uh, refractometer for testing my coolant in the CNC, make sure my coolant stay in mixed correctly. A lot more milling tools down in here. I've got a boring tool, some one, two, three blocks, parallels, chuck, there's that Tapmatic. So good video out there on using that Tapmatic to drill and tap, or to tap 256 holes in titanium. You can check that out on the channel. And down in this bottom drawer, I've got my three and four jaw chuck for the lathe. And then I've also got a rotary table for the mill. So you can see a couple of videos on the mill where I'm using that rotary table to, to make some pieces. And coming down the other side, a little better drill index, optical center finder, some large drill bits, some other taps back there in the back. Kind of my leftover junk steel aluminum bits and pieces drawer. And inserts for the lathe. Uh, these are just some of the boxes from the, the centers that I have up here. And this is a height gauge for the lathe. So you can watch a video out there on making this tool height gauge. Uh, another large boring bar that I made. Again, there's another video on the channel on making that boring bar if you need one of those. The rest of the inserts. And then down here in the bottom is all of my 5C collets for the, the collet chuck on the lathe and then all of my R8 collets for that jet mill drill. So that's kind of everything going on here in this large center toolbox. All right, just working our way in the shop from the front to the back. So in this other cabinet hanging up, this one's also hanging up above the lathe. So you can see I've got the tray with all my lathe tools on there, my centers. And mostly inside this cabinet, I do have a, you know, old paint gun and mostly just some wood tools, some parts for the table saw, miter gauge for the table saw, dovetail, joint jig, so mostly woodworking tools inside of this cabinet. All right, one other quick shot of trying to utilize space. I know I showed on the back side of this Tormach where I've got the air compressor in there. The front side is where I keep my spare coolant. So again, you look down through there, you can see that compressor from the front side. And then going over the other way, there's that band saw tucked in behind the lathe and just a couple old vices, pry bar, couple other things that I keep in behind here where I don't need them too often and builds up with chips in behind there a little bit, a little harder to clean in behind there. All right, continue on through the shop. So underneath this buffer, another one of these Husky tool cabinets, these roller cabinets. Again, these are pretty economical if you're looking for storage. So this top drawer, this is where I usually keep the drill table that I have on my mill drill. It's already in the vise right now. And uh, oftentimes I'll either keep the Pearson Pro Pallet system here. Right now I've got that, I think, in the bottom drawer, but just a couple places to store things when they're not in use. One, two, three blocks, mostly milling tools in here. And then a lot of times this has the other cabinet in front. So these are things I don't need to access as often. So I've got the follower and the steady rest, a couple of torque wrenches. So parts of the lathe that I don't use very often, you know, lifting hooks, extra power strip in here some old concrete tools, some very rusted out railroad tie nails, old drills, couple old drills, and in the bottom, most of my buffing materials. So extra buffs, uh, buffing compound, that diamond wheel and the carbide wheel for silicon carbide wheel for sharpening braised carbide tool bits. You can see a whole video on my channel about making the spacers to be able to, to mount these both onto that buffer. So again, you can check out another video on the channel about those. Down the other side, now we're just getting into some household stuff. So some extra plumbing, sprinkler parts, yard parts. Uh, next one down, get into most of my welding. So some extra welding tips, cutting torch tips, extra welding wire for that wire feed welder. Uh, kind of a junk drawer, some leather work tools and a bunch of extra handles and Bought a whole bunch of leatherwork tools off eBay years ago, and those are just some of the leftover bits. 
And down at the bottom here, some more milling accessories. So I've got an index head. You can watch a whole video on this PM index head and unboxing and setting that up. And then there's the base for that Pearson Pro Palette system. Don't currently have that on the Tormach, so that's just in there, staying clean and as dust-free as I can keep it. Again, lots of videos out there on this index head and on that Pearson Pro Palette system if you're interested in more details on those. All right, so over here to this last Husky workbench. So this top drawer, a lot of Tormach things in here. So I've got some collets and there's a torque wrench in there that I use to set up those BT-30 collets on the Tormach, a heat gun, just some other accessories in there. Down this side, I've got some extra blades for this uh, wood bandsaw up here on the bench. A Little bit of electrical parts down there the box for those electrical pliers that I have. And pretty much some empty space down here. These are the covers for the sandblast cabinet that I have to keep for the plexiglass clean. So just some adhesive little covers to put on there. And then down in the bottom, here's where I have all the BT-30 collet set up for the Tormach, the tool to be able to tighten and change those, the Heimer. So as I'm going back and forth and operating the Tormach right behind me, this is the main drawer that I'm in and out of. And shifting over to the other side, really just a junk drawer up here. A lot of leftover parts from some RC helicopter things, just lots of plastic bags for storing things. Again, more RC helicopter stuff down in there. And in this drawer, I've got a surface plate. I used to keep this up on top of the bench, but uh, it just ends up getting things stacked on it. So I found by putting it in a drawer, it keeps things off it and really nice. After I heat treat my knife blades, I can check them on there, make sure I didn't get any excessive warpage or anything like that. So it's nice, just keep that in a drawer. And down at the bottom, there's another one of my Pearson Pro pallets with the vise on it. And those are my aluminum plates there for plate quenching steel when I'm heat treating. So that's all handily accessible over here. So right up above that one in this other cabinet, uh, mostly just have some chemicals in here. So I've got my coolant oil in here. I've got whey oil in here, a couple of different kinds of whey oil, uh, some other leftover electrical pieces, a little bit of RC helicopter stuff up there on the top. So that's what's in this other cabinet. All right, so this kiln, it sits on an old Craftsman toolbox bottom. I took the wheels off of that just to keep it from rolling around and uh, put a little two by four base with some leveling feet on there so that I could keep that nice and level. But let's go ahead and take a look inside some of these drawers at what we've keep stored in here. So the top, a lot of the uh, instructions on how to operate that kiln, a little bit of thin spacer material, some brass, some stainless steel over there, and a couple pieces of other stainless steel for making guards for knives and brass, some decorative pins, Get into this next drawer and it's my heat treating foil, 10 snips for cutting that heat treating foil, some paper bags. So again, just heat treating materials in there. Get down in here and there's a couple of the extra parts that came with that coot grinder. If I wanted to use a stand on there and I think there's another larger platen is what's over in the corner. Uh, here's some other woodworking tools. Got some large hole saws there and and some other flat bottom bits for working in wood. So I think those actually I picked up at a garage sale somewhere, but they have come in handy a few times. Working our way down. There's my electrochemical etch marking system. That's what I used to put the mark on my blades and then the chemicals that go with that. Uh, inside here is actually a demagnetizer every once in a while, uh, especially after I'm using the surface grinder. My blades get a little bit too magnetized and I can use that to demagnetize them. That's uh, just a pretty simple little tool in there, a little electrical device. You just put a piece of steel through. Uh, some extra 72 inch belts. And down at the bottom, some empty boxes and then just a lot of handle material couple of polishing cloths in there. So some other knife making material, that's what's in this cabinet. 
So that's pretty much everything in there. Let me go ahead and put the cover back on that kiln and we'll keep working our way around. All right, here we are on the last large toolbox. So up in the top, just have some punches, some rags, some Q-tips. That's where I keep my glasses, my wedding ring, all those things when I come in the shop and swap out, put on my safety glasses. So we'll just go through this from top to bottom. So just some tie down straps, some old block planes in here, some letter stamps, silicone, cock gun, things like that. Bunch of hole saws in there. And just some tape measures, some brushes, mostly knives, razor blades, chalk line. Just kind of some miscellaneous different things in here. A lot of clamps. And a lot of helicoil kits. Some other plumbing tools back in there. Working down this side, some mirrors and magnets and some shim stock. Rivet gun, some sprinkler parts back in there. And my main screwdriver drawer, main plier drawer right below that. Getting into the bottom main box, there's main wrenches, sockets, kind of everything, just general tool related right there in that large long drawer. Below that, hammer pry bar collection. You know, kind of some odd snap ring pliers and just some odd angle wrenches, some unique tools there. Uh, a lot more in punches, some extra tape, a lot of Allen wrenches in there, glue gun, some saws. Solder gun, pipe flare kit, some wood chisels in here, some putty knives, some other chisels. Get into the air tool drawer down here, so some different air tools and just some different parts for air tools. Impact driver. And kind of looks like a junky drawer down there, but uh, mostly it's a large solder and heat gun down there a couple more air tools that don't fit up above zip strips spotlight a small anvil 10 pound sledge and a couple pullers over there and finally coming down this side main electrical drawer so electrical testing tools crimping tools some leftover screwdrivers and pliers Sandpaper, abrasives, a bunch of extra tape, a couple extra silicone, some tubes of caulk. And down here in the bottom is the rest of my pallets for that Pearson Pro Pallet system. And that's pretty much it. Well, YouTube, that is it. I think we have been through every nook, cranny, and space in this shop. So I hope you enjoyed seeing what I was able to fit into this one garage bay space for a shop. I know that, uh, you know, not all of us have as much room as we'd like to have with a shop. I would love to have one double, triple this size. And if I had it, I'm sure I'd be able to fill it with all different things. But hey, we have to operate within the space that we do have available to us right now. And I've think I've maximized the use of this one. So hopefully I gave you some ideas on storage or where to put things or just what else you might want if you are trying to think about setting up a shop of your own. If uh, I didn't go into enough detail on something, if you have questions about any of the tools or something that you saw in a drawer that I didn't address, drop a comment in here and happy to answer any of those questions. Again, if you're new to the channel, first one you've seen on here, I hope you liked it and I encourage you to get out there and check out the other videos on the channel about machining, welding, knife making, just everything else we've got going on here in the Blades to Be shop. And if you like the channel, would love it if you hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, drop a like, drop a comment, would love to hear from you. And that also lets others know that, hey, this video is worth checking out and worth watching. Until next time, I hope you're out in your own shop working on some projects of your own. I'll be here in the Blades to Be shop working on that next video for you. Until then, y'all take care.